Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanted to talk about how to homeschool using one main topic and then branching off from that for all of your individual like little uh, courses. All right, so the person that I do this for is my technically second grader. Now the great way about homeschooling about this way is this is not one grade, one set of um, like curriculum that I'm using for everything. Like I'm not just buying A Becca or just buying Alpha Omega or whatever curriculum it is that you like. It's not just like I bought the second grade and that's what we're using. I'm tailoring this to him individually, but what we've kind of done and what you can do, and you can do this even more than what I've done, is take one subject that they really like um, for example, my son really likes um, like engineering, cars, trains. That's what he likes. So we're taking those kind of things, and you can do this with anything. Say they really like space, use space, like planets and everything as their subject. Um, they really like animals, do it with animals, zoology. Um, they really like the ocean, then you know, do stuff with the ocean. I, I mean anything states my son really likes the states so for a while we did that you can use the American states but what it is is find the one topic that they're interested in and that they're like totally about and then you can sneak in math and English and reading and you know handwriting all the not so fun subjects or at least what they consider not so fun and this does work better once they already kind of know how to read. You can do it before they know how to read, but I found for myself that it worked better once he kind of could read because um, there's really no way to learn your blends and letters without just kind of learning them. Um, so yeah, math's a little that way too. You kind of just get to a point where you're like, you're just gonna have to do this. But here's, let me give you kind of an overall idea so you have a better idea of exactly what it is I do all right so say we're taking trains and cars and like engineering because that kind of goes in with that um, for reading we are doing actually this engineer Academy um, and it is from uh, Usborne books but it is it's really neat you guys so you could do a reading book that like I have from a Becca but he's not interested in those he doesn't really care about skip in his dog buddy or whatever he didn't care that they went fishing he didn't want to read it he didn't care anything about it so i got him this and it's it's fun so every day he gets to read like here he read the intro and then he got to do the little thing then the next day for reading or you know we probably don't do this every day it's probably like maybe three times a week two times a week and then he does other reading kind of randomly just throughout um, um I, uh, anytime I can kind of get him to read something, that's just what I do for reading because the more he reads, the better he's going to be. And does it really matter if it's an actual reader or another book? I don't know that it does. All right. So anyway, then for each little lesson they have where they talk about something and then they actually have like a project that they get to do on the side. And this has been really great because he does this for reading and then you can sneak math in so you know they want to talk about inches and distance and stuff so after he's done reading this and he's doing his project you know i'm like okay well let's talk about that a little bit more and so then we go into math and even though then we're technically i'm working off of a worksheet um let me show you okay so like here's his worksheet for from today okay so I'm working off of this worksheet and he doesn't work everything in here. Um, a lot of it I have him do on a marker board or um, at the table like on another piece of paper or even just vocalizing it to me if he can do it in his head or showing it to me somehow. I'm not as worried about him having to write out everything and write it out exactly the way I have it and then prove it all. I wanna know that he gets that, but I'm not gonna make him sit and do all of that. If he's more interested in making that equation a different way but he's still making that equation and still solving the problem then I'm okay with that so that's an easy way then to lead into math and I go well you know like how they were talking about this we have to know this and then it's kind of more of like with math anyway a terminology thing um, and you can even do it like okay if I have like for fractions you know I have 
use maybe trains. You know, here's the length of the train track, okay? But I need one fourth of the train track to be blocked off for construction. You know, so they can, in his mind, he's doing trains, he's not doing fractions, but yet it's a fun way for them to do it. And it takes a little bit of work on your part to kind of think, okay, what, what am I gonna say to make this kind of go with this? But you can totally do it, you guys. And then there are some things I can't think of anything. And so I'm just like, you know, you're just gonna have to know how to do this because people who like these things and build these things, they know how to do this. So you just get to do this right now. So there are all those moments. But there are ways to kind of add it in and make them feel like they're still actually learning about the other topic that they really like. And it does help, I think, at least for my son, it helps him realize, oh, you actually do need math in every day. It's not just a random worksheet mom's making me work. All right, so there we got reading and we got math. All right, so now moving on into, um, well, I call it English, but I noticed a lot of people call it other things like grammar, or literature, I don't even know, there's lots of names out there for it, but you know what I mean. I mean like language arts, that's another one. So, but like talking about nouns, adjectives, verbs, all that kind of stuff, okay? So again, I have a book and I kind of go off of that to help me keep on track and know where I'm going. But I can take that then and I take something he likes. So I'll take like this book or another book that's about the same topic that he's really into. And I'll be like, okay, let's take this sentence and we'll learn to dissect that sentence out of the book that he's interested in. So it might be a sentence about trains and we'll figure out what the noun was, what is the adjective, why is that? And um, yeah, so that's really easy to work in there. Um, and then you can you know, talk it more through if you want, but um, just kind of depending on the level that your child's at. And then sometimes I do still use the actual worksheet to be like, okay, well here's an exercise they want, let's see if we can do this. But um, and he doesn't mind at all, but yeah, you can, you can totally keep it with the theme they like because that's all like a book oriented themes and that's really easy to teach if you're just in a book anyway. Um, at least at the level I'm at now, I know as they get older and harder, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm not teaching high schoolers. I don't know. I can't really tell you if this works or not. I would imagine it could to some extent, but yeah, I don't know. Um, like I said, he's a second grader, but he's doing work, I'd say anywhere between the second and fourth grade level um, on his subjects. So they're kind of varied all over in there. All right, so let's see, what do we got now? All right, science. So, you know, this only works for a short amount of time because science is more than just cars and trains and like, you know, the engineering stuff. That's way more to science than that. But luckily with his, um, what he likes that's easy to do with science again you just get books that are more science geared towards that and the library is a great resource for this i've also found there are a couple apps that you can use that let you access books from your public library that you can access on your phone or your tablet or your whatever it is you're using um, and so that's been really awesome another thing i found is really helpful is book on tapes we love them and so if i can find one that's about a subject he likes he is all about that and he will listen to that over and over and over. So, you know, that's easy to mix in there, but you know, science and history are kind of fun and it's easy to throw all kinds of things in there because it's just interesting. But um, it's really easy to go ahead and take whatever it is they like and add science in there because science goes with almost everything. And the same with history. You can study the history of that topic. You can look at maybe what what you can go several different ways you can look at like the effects that that has had on society you can look at how it came about to begin with say like cars you can look at just the real mechanical like side of it like this person created it this is when they created it and this is why they created it and you can do that or you can look at it from a more historical standpoint of why did they end up creating cars why did this come about what was going on around that time period that sparked an interest in creating cars so there's lots of different kind of angles you can take at that, but um, it's not as hard as you would first think when you really start kind of sitting down and thinking about it. You're like, oh, we can totally go here and totally go there. And if you're like me, what happens is you end up actually having way more that you're like, I think we could cover than is probably realistic for their age. And you're like, yeah, okay, maybe not. So, but yeah, just, I mean, have fun with it because 
I don't know. I used to be really uptight about like, okay, well, in third grade, they're supposed to learn this history. And in fourth grade, they learn this history. And he's still getting that, but it's not the main focus. And I feel like he's actually learning way more this way because it's something he's interested in. And when you're interested in something, you know how that is. You want to know it. You want to know as much as you can about it. And I think being interested in something and learning about it kind of sparks your interest in something else. So how I get in like the more like common history or science lessons, you know, is we'll do book on tape. Like he's doing story of the world. We're doing, um, the, it's over the anatomy of the body. It's called uh, apologia. Sorry. I blanked on that name. Um, and we're also doing that book on tape and he has a book that he follows along in that too, if he feels like it, but he can listen to those while he plays. And since he's an audio learner, he really actually retains a ton of that, even though it has nothing really to do with the other topics we're doing. Um, I also sometimes, I have an ABECA third grade science book and ABECA third grade uh, history book. And sometimes when they're eating dinner and my husband's not there for some reason or eating lunch or they're just wanting to do a craft or I will actually read out of that kind of like you would a storybook. And that's another way that they're getting that and hearing that, but it's not necessarily our main focus in school or we're spending a whole like time for that. Um, and then, you know, they'll learn more about that. You learn more, you kind of relearn all of that again in high school. And then in college, you know, you take a lot of that again too. So they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it from some point because a lot of elementary schools, introductions to things, and then you get it all again. So um, I'm trying not to worry too much about what might be missed here or there and know they're gonna get there. And if they never have an interest in American history, I do think it's important to know American history but they don't have to be obsessed over it and they don't have to know every little detail of it because it was never my favorite. I love history, but American history wasn't my favorite, but I know stuff and I know what I need to know, but I don't know every little detail. Like my husband knows way more because he thought it was fascinating. And so he knows all these minute little details that I don't know, but overall they don't really matter. You know what I mean? It's kind of just, it's neat to know, it's good to know, but it doesn't affect my day-to-day -day life. So that's kind of the way with science and histories. Um, you know, you're not gonna know everything. There's gonna be certain areas you know a lot about and other areas you're like, well, I'm gonna have to research on that if I wanna know more. That's normal. All right, sorry, I was kind of rambling. Let's move on to writing. Uh, again, the language art subjects are really easy to do when you're trying to just do a theme. It's really simple to do that. They can copy a book that they really like for writing, to practice writing. Um, depending on where they're at for writing. They can write stories about something that they like. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, you can totally just throw that in. It's really easy to pick the subject that they like and go with it for writing and hand, for handwriting. Um, so, you know, I just get like a normal notebook and they can do that. He does not like to write, so this is something we don't do an overabundance of, but we're working on that. And, I'm hoping in the future he'll enjoy it more. Um, so we're moving that way, but you know, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. So anyway, but that is an easy thing to add in with the correct topic. All right guys, so I think that's kind of all the main subjects and you know you can go off on things. You can have arts and craft time that um, you can add into there. You can do music and of course music's a little harder to have, like there's not like a car themed music or train themed music, but it's music. Um, computer time, I, I don't know what classes you do and what classes you don't do, but that is just kind of a tangible idea of how you can take one subject that they love and incorporate it in everything. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope that kind of explained what it is we do and how I do that. I don't do that with all of my children. I just do it with my oldest. My other children seem to do just fine with the, here's your worksheet for the day. Let's work these worksheets. They seem to enjoy that. So I'm not going to go to the extra work of trying to bring in all this extra stuff if they're happy with their worksheets. But um, yes, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like my video and subscribe if you'd like to see more like it. And I will see you all soon. Bye.